What's up freaks? This is just me and today we're gonna be looking at the best quad teardrops. The teardrops are basically the inner head of the quadriceps. Anatomically they're called vastus medialis. This picture on the screen shows where the vastus medialis are on the quad. It's not the most inner part of the quads, uh, it's not where the thighs are actually touching together, that's the the adductors which aren't actually part of the quadriceps. The teardrop is the area that resembles the tear shape down there by the knee. I'm sure you already know that either way, so just to make it clear. So the teardrops is undoubtedly the second most essential part of the quad after the outer head, the sweep. Um, the teardrops make the quad look more balanced and complete, even though they're not as eye-catching as the sweeps. Okay, and in this video, we're gonna be using any front pose, mostly the ab and thigh, and most muscular variations, and the front lat spread, which are gonna be very useful for us today. And I'm gonna go through the body rules in increasing order, meaning that you're gonna have to wait to see the most impressive teardrops. But still, this list can be objective. It's me who ordered it, so it's inevitably subjective. But without any further ado, let's start with Ed Kowak, who was a bodybuilder in the 1980s and 90s. He's not very well known, but in my reckoning, he's got impressive teardrop development. Not the best shape. Overall, his quads are very oddly shaped, but he's got very very impressive massive teardrops and to me they're a standout feature so i decided to include him in the end of this list so that's a pretty good set although not the largest and not the most conditioned either and moving on to today's era we have good veto vitaly ugolnikov and this guy has already developed a ridiculous set of quads at the mere start of his career Look at the size of the quad sweeps. But if you take your eyes off that, uh, because that's crazy, so it's hard to do that. But his teardrops are also very impressive. And that's obviously the reason uh, why I included Vitaly on this list. That's what we're discussing today. They're pretty big and they show some faint details too, uh, some feathering. I think they actually stack up really good to be those incredible outer hats. That that says something. And next is another current competitor, Hunter Brada, who has exceptional quad development too. His sweeps are world class, but again, they don't overwhelm the teardrops too much at all. Hunter's teardrops have decent size and proportions uh, with the other heads of his quadriceps, and they have impressive vascularity too. It's surely not anything to marvel at, if you know what I mean, but it's more than a solid set of teardrop muscles, so that puts him on my radar. And next up, this is the Persian Wolf, Hattie Chupin, who also has impressive flaring quads, but his inner thighs, the vastus medialis, also appear very good. His teardrops are not very large. I think they're actually pretty small, but they're meaty enough in my opinion and they don't have a very pleasing shape but they show great definition so some slate feathers there really outstanding so just menacing quads overall and i think the pros and cons of his teardrops kind of cancel uh, themselves out so overall very good but look at this 80s bodybuilder, the original giant killer, the incredible Danny Padilla. He's also got great teardrops. Now, sorry for these pictures, but again, it's it's the 80s, right? So his sweeps and mid heads are not bad, but the highlight are clearly the teardrops. They look out of this world big for a man of Danny's stature, and even in these bad pictures, we can still notice some veins and faint feathering, so just awesome stuff. This is four-time Mr. Olympia, the cut above the rest, Jay Cutler. 
Jay had notoriously detailed quads and he shows slight visible striations through his teardrops as well. He has great, great shape in his quads. They have always looked very aesthetic. I see an area of improvement for the teardrops though. It certainly wouldn't hurt if they were bigger, had a bit more mass in them, but they already look very good because they're so diced and stand out. And this is Craig Titus, an infamous bodybuilder, I would say, which is unfortunate, uh, from the 2000s era, mainly. He had decent quad sweeps as well, but the really eye-catching feature of his quads would have to be the teardrops, no doubt. They have impressive size compared to the rest of the quads, and they also show good definition. So the fact that they stand out makes them actually be really impressive. Look at the vascularity there too in the pictures in the middle and right. But speaking about vascularity, this is the mutant Nick Walker from the current bodybuilding era. And he has insane veins all throughout his lower body, including the area of the teardrops. Nick has a good amount of mass in his teardrops. That's the reason why he is on my list mainly. It has to be said that his teardrops might be the least impressive out of the three heads on the quad that are presented, so they don't look standout, but either way, the development is just inevitable. This man's got a bright future, if you ask me. And going back, this is Nasser al somebody from the 90s. He doesn't have the best thighs, but his teardrops are really good in my opinion. Definitely the highlight of his lower body from the front, along with his calves, that is. But that's debating. The teardrops look pretty well thickly developed, in my opinion. Not a bad shape either, and they draw the eye. The reason being not only their development, but also the two remaining heads, which are not near that level. They frankly don't look very impressive, to be honest. But that only serves to make his teardrops look that much better. And this current competitor, Sunny Chodhoff, has pleasantly shaped teardrops to go along with his insane outer hats. The teardrops are very detailed. They show some feathering, which looks really good, and they appear to be well proportioned with the rest of the thighs. They, they're not too dominant. That might not be a great thing in this specific video, uh, because we want really standout teardrops, but we also have to consider the actual muscularity and definition of the muscular area we're taking a look at, uh, which Sunit in his teardrops has that in spades. And here comes in the Frankenstein Paul Delet from the 90s. Paul Delet had a great level of development in his vastus medialis. The size of them is impressing me. They seem to have the same, if not bigger, level of muscle mass as his actual quad sweeps. So. This is what it looks like when a bodybuilder has overly developed teardrops, in my opinion. So overall, quadriceps, not one of the best of all time, but the teardrops are absolutely excellent. And this is Milo Starchev from the 80s. He has good sweeps and middle heads as well, uh, as incredible teardrops. Look at the thickness of them, how much muscle he's actually packing there, very impressive. The size is just ginormous compared to his sweeps, which are not too small at all. They look really big too. So just very dense muscle down there at the knee, at the teardrop area. You got to appreciate development like this and also the faint bits of feathers. Next up, 90s mass monster, Mike Francois. He didn't have the best quadriceps development overall, once again, but his teardrops are among the best, in my opinion. They have an original, unique shape. The way they're formed is very interesting to me, but there's nothing wrong with it. They're massive, looking to be even bigger than his sweeps, and it's not like he's horrible in his sweeps. He's no slouch in that area. So the teardrops stand out in his poses. I think you'll agree, Mike Francois definitely belongs on this list of the most impressive teardrops of all time. He looks great. And we move 
on to nowadays era, which we find a glorious feathering on the genetically gifted Lionel Bayerke. The details and striations in his inner thighs make up for the lack of dense development compared to someone like Milos Sarchev that we saw a minute ago. So no, the two drops are not huge and thickly developed, but they have such a great aesthetic appeal and insane definition, so that's got to count for something, right? A nowadays classic physique division competitor Branch Chen Kang also impressed the heck out of me with his inner thigh development. Crazy. Definitely noteworthy even next to those incredible flaring outer hats. Chen has got great muscle bellies in his quads and that makes his two drops look aesthetic in my opinion. They flow well and suit his physique if that makes any sense at all. Size wise not bad at all and detail wise also good. So I would say very solid. 2000s era competitor Alex Fedorov had teardrops that slightly overpowered his sweeps and dominated his upper leg area as I see it. They stand out to me quite a lot. True, they have a bit of a funny shape to them. They look to be too short and wide, but I guess that would be more subjective. Uh, on the note of mass and development of this body part, Alexander Fedorov is competitive with everyone and very impressive. He shows more than decent size, vascularity, and details, so deserves his spot as I see it. And Mustafa Mohammed from the 2000s had very good teardrops as well, if you ask me. He's got insane size packed onto the other head, but the inner part of his quadriceps also look top notch. They're huge and ripped at the same time with visible feathering in this part of the the thigh and the shape is not half bad either his teardrops look actually pretty eye pleasing uh, when considering how freaky looking the rest of Mustafa's physique was so great and next up we have the 90s giant killer Lee Priest he's more celebrated for his arms and midsection but I always say don't forget about the wheels on him you can note he's got crazy thickness and dense muscle in his teardrop area. They have a great shape, even though beauty is in the eye of the beholder, of course. And even though they're certainly not the biggest quads out there, remember how short the blonde myth was, and then tell me the size of his quads isn't impressive. And he shows feathering, which is always nice to see, aesthetically pleasing. So give it up for a Lee Priest. And this is Tom Platz from the 80s. What? The 80s? Yes, he was the quad father. His low body development was undoubtedly top three of his time. Most people would say easily, easily the best. I would personally argue Jeff King and later Phil Hill, both amazing sets of wheels to come out of the 80s, uh, had also great wheel development. But in the end, Tom Platz is legendary and would probably overtake these guys as well. Uh, but I digress, <laughs> Tom Platz had incredibly thickly developed teardrops. He also had feathering most of the time, and he had huge thighs overall, so he would no doubt be very competitive with his teardrop development, even on today's IFBB stage. Very, very good. Mohamed Sheban from today's era has some killer teardrops, if you ask me. Look at the mass of them. They don't look too small, even next to his jumbo size sweeps, which are a real standout. But I think so are his teardrops. They also show excellent vascularity, although no feathers, and they're not very well separated from the remaining heads. Uh, but the mass and thickness, most packing on there is quite out of the charts. So that puts him high on this list. And now we get to the top five of this video, the best teardrops. And we have 90s, 2000s mass monster, eight time Mr. Ronnie Coleman. He had teardrops huge enough that they didn't even look undersized next to his sweeps and middle hats, which are both among the best of all time too, in my opinion. Ronnie's teardrops might not be the most thickly developed, but they show a great level of vascular details 
uh, that makes them stand out and complete all his poses very effectively. The one unique quality I noticed about Big Ron's teardrops is the way they appear to be wrapping around his legs as if they were to try to cover as much space on their own. It looks absolutely freakish once you notice it, don't you guys think? I hope you can see what I mean, because it really gives Ronnie Squads a notorious look that we all very well know, and that was essential for the freakiness of his body. So that mainly, in my opinion, can be contributed to his teardrops. In fourth place sits a rarely mentioned guy, I think he competed in the 2000s. It's Caprice Mori, who had incredible sweep in quads, I'm telling you. Take a look at that, how round they are. But the teardrops, they don't lag behind at all, if you ask me. They're not that much of a standout just because the sweeps are so good, but nobody can deny the quality mass Caprice has in the teardrop area. Look at the vascularity, look at the size and separation. To me, this is just a freaky set of teardrops. I'd be interested to know what you guys think about his teardrops. I think they're massive and deserve a high spot on my list for that, for sure. And here we got the man, the shadow Dorian Yates, 90s six-time Sando winner. I would say he was pretty well known for his overdeveloped teardrops. They sure have always stood out to me more than probably anything on Dorian, to be honest, including his incredible calves and lats. I might be alone in that, admittedly, but I dare to say anyone who takes a look at Dorian's quads is immediately gonna have their sight set on those big teardrops, right? Because they're so immense and overpowering. I gotta admit, they don't show impressive details at all, but they're well shaped and they're not small by any means, as I already said. I find them to really draw my eye and jump out of these pictures due to the fact that they're on a completely different level than his mid hats and even outer hats that don't look very impressive. So that's why I placed the shadow so high on this list. Let me remind you, this is third overall place. And in second place, I have a freak in the quad department. 90s bodybuilder Paul DeMaio, nicknamed Quadzilla for a reason, of course. Paul had such incredible thickness down there in the area of the teardrops. Look at that. He was also very dry and conditioned in his muscle group. Uh, with visible veins crawling up both of his teardrops. Compared to his sweeps, the teardrops might not seem that massive, but that's because Paul also boasted some of the most impressive outer hats of all time, not just the inner hats. Paul had such great genetic potential in this body part. Look how incredibly low his teardrop muscle belly inserts. It looks to be going right into his knee joint. It's unreal. He's packing an incredible size as well. Man, I don't think I can ever allot his teardrops enough. To me, they're just a perfect set. Um, but he's second, so who can battle with the Quadzilla on this one for first place? Well, in my opinion, it's Jeff King, who I was mentioning when discussing who could beat Tom Platt's squats in the 80s. And I think... Jeff's teardrops were better than Tom's. Look at the separation in the quads, how well you can see the teardrop. It jumps out at you and goes right in your face, demanding attention. The shape is absolutely beautiful. He's got great muscle bellies and very low inserts like Paul de Mayo had too. The thickness is out of the shorts. Notice how much muscle he has in that body part. It's hard to believe even, especially in the pick on the right. The density of the teardrop looks almost unattainable. He sure had to work extremely hard to get that, never mind having insane genetics. And that's not just Jeff, of course. And all right, he's probably uh, not as vascular as some of the other entries on this list, but it's not like he's lacking any sort of detail. He has aesthetics and shape to rival anybody. That's why the Nagzilla Jeff King tops my list for today. Okay, so let me guys know down in the comment section below 
your opinion on my rankings and the video as a whole. Did you enjoy it? I hope so. I would be glad to hear your thoughts on the list and who has the best two drops in bodybuilding history according to you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to watch some best quads videos and also like and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day.